four minutes to eight now, BBC Radio Bristol. It's Saturday morning with Claire Kavanagh. And you must remember this. It was one of the big stories of 2013. The discovery of horse meat in burgers and in ready meals in some of our biggest supermarkets in the country. Well, later this week, a book by two Bristol academics, which looks sort of deeper into cases of food fraud, is going to be published. It's called Sorting the Beef from the Bull, which is a brilliant title for a start. We've got Richard Evershed and Nicola Temple, who've written this book in the studio with us. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And uh, Now, tell us first of all about why you thought this would be a good idea to write the book. Well, um, the, the, if you, um, there have been a lot of scientific papers, there's been a lot of newspaper reports, and you can read a lot of gov government documents and legislation on this subject, but um, we didn't feel there had been a proper a collection, an explanation of this whole subject in a way that the um, the general public could understand. So that yeah. was our motive to bring it in, into into that sort of arena. I think it's true. I think people still feel like they're a little bit in the dark over yeah. this. Yeah. And what did you actually find out through doing your little investigations? Well, we found out that the 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 the, 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 the number of examples is much larger than we expected. Mm. And that it's been going on for a very very long time, um, and people are. You know, there was people changed their behaviors quite quickly after the horse meat scandal, but then we so forget. they go back to eating yeah, these exactly. kind of products. Well, they change, the, they avoid those products for a while, and then they get forgetful and go back mm. to their old habits, and um, and so yeah, then another one comes up and refreshes our memory. So we were trying to to collect stories from around the world um, and across time periods to show that. This is happening a lot, and uh, it's something that people should be worried about. Mm. Are there a few revelations in the book? Are there a few surprises? Mm. Um, the, the surprise, I think, is um, apart from the really shocking examples of which there are, if you go back to the 1980s, there was the Spanish vegetable oil scandal where people died, lots of people mm. died. Um, and there are um, examples from, from China where... Um, um, there's um, adulteration of baby formula. You know who would do that? No. <laughs> um, knowing that the, what they were doing was 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 totally fraudulent and total total deception. But I suppose um, the, the the thing that really started to um, strike me as I'm a scientist, I'm an analytical scientist, um, is just what a complex subject this is. Uh, that's 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 really it's 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 getting to the bottom of it, which mm. is the, really the problem. Did you manage to discover a sort of overall reason why people were doing it? Was it about money all the oh, time? Yeah. It's money. It's definitely money. Um, and in fact, that's it, it, that's actually a good thing in some respects because if people were out there with another motive to harm people, we would be in serious trouble. So. Um, yeah, money is the underlying factor for sure. Yeah, it's always it's always putting in a cheaper ingredient to to, to sort of stretch stretch the profit margin. It's as simple as that. Yeah, and did you find that that was actually the case in a lot of UK supermarkets? I mean, that's what we were we were led <coughs> to believe. Was it what you found out as well? Um, I I'd be a little careful about pointing the finger always at supermarkets because the fraud can occur absolutely anywhere. Mm. So you, you you have to be a little wary of of pointing pointing um, the fingers too much at, at, at individual suppliers um, mm. or, 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 or sales outlets, um, but just be mindful that it can be everywhere. I think the 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 bigger problem is more about the type of foods that we eat. Um, if you can hold a food item in your hand and identify it, it's a tomato, it's a pork chop. You're sort of in control. Yeah. The problem starts to arise when you start to sort of mash things up, grind them up, mm. then you're not, then there's the opportunity for slipping something into it. And also, essentially, uh, meat and certain foods have just become too cheap to buy, haven't they? Yeah, I think, I think we've become a lot, we've become very unrealistic as in terms of what we should get for our food, what we should get for our money, so how much mm. we should pay for it. Um, other things about how long these things should last on our on our shelf once we buy it, and, and that's a, a product of our food system as it is right now. So, mm. yeah. Uh, what can we do about making sure that we are eating the right things and buying the right things? I would say try where you can to make your own food from the whole ingredients. Mm. Um, that's one thing I've done pretty much all my life. I'm an enthusiastic cook and. Um, 
um, that's that's what I always try and do, um, and it's deeply satisfying. And actually, food tastes better if you make it from the whole ingredients, grind your own spices, um, make things from the whole ingredients, yeah. um, and 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 just take a little time and enjoy food. You know, mm. it is the most in, one of the most important things that we have in life. You know, next to water, shelter, and clean air, food is about your own health and nutrition. Um, your lifelong um, welfare and health. So why not take a bit more charge of it? Enjoy food. It's fundamental. Yeah. I think one of the other things that we can do too is reduce the number of steps that we have in the food chain. So try and b support more local um, uh, businesses and, and buy more locally and, and to buy from people that we trust. And there's other side benefits to that as well, right? So. Yeah, of course. It's so important and it also uh, helps the local economy as well. Uh, great to meet you both. That's Richard Evershed and Nicola Temple. And the book is called Sorting the Beef from the Boar, the Science of Food Fraud Forensics. Thank you very much for coming in. Cheers. Thank you, Thank you very much.